listening to WKIT Pyramid One World Radio. written to Pyramid One World Radio and asked Bob Charles. How can psychic and tarot readings help humanity? Allow me to answer. Psychic and tarot readings can help humanity in a variety of ways, including providing guidance and clarity. A psychic or tarot reading can offer insight into a situation and provide guidance to help individuals make more informed decisions. This can be particularly helpful when someone is feeling lost confused, or stuck in a particular area of their life. Promoting self-awareness, by revealing insights into a person's past, present, and future, psychic and tarot readings can help individuals develop a greater understanding of themselves, their motivations, and their patterns of behavior. This can lead to increased self-awareness and self-improvement. Offering comfort and support. Psychic and tarot readings can provide emotional support and comfort to those who are experiencing grief, loss, or difficult transitions in their lives. A reading can offer reassurance that the individual is not alone and that they have the strength and resilience to move forward. Encouraging spiritual growth. Psychic and tarot readings can provide a window into the spiritual realm, helping individuals connect with their higher selves and gain a deeper understanding of their place in the world. This can lead to greater spiritual growth and a more fulfilling life. Overall, psychic and tarot readings can be a powerful tool for individuals seeking guidance, clarity, and support in their lives. However, it's important to remember that these readings should be used as a supplement to, not a replacement for, professional counseling and other forms of support. Please welcome to WKIT Pyramid One World Radio your hosts Maggie and Jamie Clark. That's awesome, man. Great intro. Hey, is that some AI as well? Or did you write all of those words? No, no, the words are mine. Nice. Words are mine. Nice. I had to look up a couple a couple of things to get, you know, like you ever you ever like you guys have probably done it too. And I, you, you start writing, you have an idea, and all of a sudden it's like the train falls off the track. Just like you know, mm-hmm. you have to then you have to look around, you have to like get something to attract you to. You know, is there a word you can use? Is there a phrase you can use? Is there an idea? You know, so many people, uh, when they're writing, just write. You know, it's just like, eh, that's what it is. But in a case like that one, we're aimed at a certain direction. I mean, it's, it's uh, how would you say it? It's an infinite idea. It's an idea that has a continuance. It has a, a body to it. It's got a purpose to it. And if you put all these things together, that's what you come up with. Nice. Sounds great. Because I mean, seriously, I, you know, I was thinking about it. Like, how would one be like the other one? You know, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like, you know, be, besides sharing a meal, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot more to it than that, you know? So I just, uh, I don't know. I just like a little crazy. That's all. Hey, but the AI, but wait a minute. The AI, though, does help because one part I couldn't put together. So I fed it into the AI and it rewrote what I wrote. Yeah. Isn't that impressive? Not not different. Just rearranged it. Beautiful and you know? probably more readable. <laughs> like, well, oh, I, oh. you see what, what I said, what I said would have led somebody off the off the track a little bit. I read it back to myself and a million times. Sounded good to me. <laughs> but then I put it on it on it. I said it over over a tape, and I played the tape back to myself. I said, "Hmm, that's the problem. You don't know it until you actually li- you know listen to it." I say to so many people every single day, "If you think you have a problem, 
go in front of a mirror and tell yourself the problem you have. Tell yourself. Tell yourself. And see if it makes sense. Because many, many people, when they do that, they're looking at themselves, looking in their eyes. I say this all the time and about loving yourself. Same deal. If you do that, you automatically isolate yourself to yourself. And then all the rest of the stuff that's usually around you and that that's a bogging up your brain, you know, kind of kind of, you know, sogging up the uh, the highway and distracting it, you. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just like it's clear for a thing because you're looking at yourself. It's like, <gasps> that's what I look like. <laughs> I, I look in a bit. Well, we don't have any mirrors in the house anymore. I broke them all. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm serious. I mean, it was like, hey, you know, I kept doing it. I kept trying it. I said, I love you. And it, 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 I ever see a mirror stick out its tongue? <laughs> <laughs> Only with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, I said, I love me. And it went, mm. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. Uh, and when you can look in the mirror, it gives you a different perspective. Most of us are used to being looking outside of ourselves rather than within. And when you can do that, it's even the little subtleties that can give you a lot of insight about yourself. Sometimes we just need to know, okay, it's okay to communicate with ourselves. Okay, I can understand a little bit more. And kind of like you did, you played it back to go, well, oh, hearing it in that way, I hear it a little bit different. Okay, so you've gotten a different perspective, not better or worse, but different. And in doing that, you're able to plug that into AI and go, let's see if anything else can uh, be reorganized or rewritten. And the good thing is you have the subject, but it added its own flavor and more than likely spoke even more effectively. You know, so, many people, so many people out there will connect with me with this too. That is the way I wrote songs. If you're writing music, okay, and you play something, either keyboards, guitar, whatever, and then you play the thing, sometimes somebody will say, well, you know, maybe if we had this, maybe if we had that. Well, you know what you do? You take the same thing, you record whatever you did, record the whole song, and then play, you know, close your eyes, lay down somewhere or whatever, just calm out, chill, and play it back. And all of a sudden, all these little things, you know, these little, little yeah. check there, check there, check there. Then you go back and you do it again. You play it again. You go, ah, you know, I, I've, I've done it a billion times since I was like 14, 14 nice. to 15. That was 100 years ago. But, yeah, you had plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when I'm 102, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another but a number, man. Hey, and, and so as we were connecting before, you had written the numbers, 555, and yeah, the yeah, energy yeah. about it. Isn't it interesting, but it is by the numbers. A lot more people are starting to realize that numbers and letters have vibrational patterns of energy and information. You know, that's why I always say, really, E equals MC squared, does it really, does it? And yet within those letters, we get scientific methodology in this case, in a way to create technology that can either obliterate or heal or any of the above. Hmm. I didn't look I didn't look up the number. I'm still getting four, four, four every morning on the on the uh, on the uh, microwave. Well, mag mag is good with that. Five, 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 and four, 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 four. Gotta love fours. Fours build foundation. They build structure. They they build. Um, I guess what we would call the roots of things. You know where you'd want to plant or rest for a while. Like what makes you feel safe. What makes you feel secure. What makes things like really click into place and you can function from that base level. But when I always think when the numbers repeat themselves, you know, I've been processing this piece of information for a while. I really feel like the the number four is hitting on multi levels of consciousness. You get one four for the conscious mind, one for the subconscious, one for the super conscious. You know, I'm playing around with this theory that some people need to see repetitive numbers so it sinks in a little bit deeper. But that four vibration is really strong. When you add those all up together, it's a 12, which reduces to a three. Three energy always feeds the creativity to the four to make it manifest. And then I also feel like when the vibration of any specific one number is raised, it moves it into a very spiritual foundation as well. Not just the four can be a physical foundation, but then it's the physical foundation and then the mental emotional foundation and then the spiritual foundation. Like I feel like when you stack numbers together, 
it's a reminder of how important foundation is, how important it is to feel safe, to feel secure, to, uh, taking the number four, for instance, in, in that example. So, You know, let me just uh, say something here for one second. If anybody wants to, by the way, I don't know whether I had said it on another show, but just in case, you can text. I'm watching it. You can text right here to the show. We have a text number. It's 863-222-1499. Don't get the 222 confused. Pretty much right in the middle of the numbers. That's right. And we do have someone on the phone. Cool. Who's on the line? This is Reed. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. It's the goddess voice. Yes, I, ha I had you coming in from heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, Reese, good to talk with you. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing? I'm okay. Hanging in there. Getting settled in. Yeah, I know there's major changes happening, but it is allowing you to kind of settle in a little bit more effectively because I feel like this is kind of just the next phase of your life. And, you know, whatever the circumstances are going on, sometimes those will push us to go in another direction. And even though sometimes it's a reactive experience, that's going to get you now proactive to go, okay, I'm not going to settle for this. I'm going to start to expect this. And then things start to shift. Uh -huh. Because, you know, you've got other people and your son, who is an amazing young man, is great. He's also vibing with you and what you're going through. Uh-huh. Yeah, you for know. sure. Yeah, well, and he's sensitive in a very good way. And so in that connection, as you know, in this case, he can see you starting to have to sometimes we got to move away to find ourselves kind of thing that I feel like, OK, this is the kind of like the last stop of, OK, I had to move to get away. Now I'm going to move away to find myself. And so you're going to start to bring in yeah. new people. And it's great because uh, just sometimes, you know, it takes us for us to move to get those new people. Otherwise, we tend to hang in there with others. Sure. What do you see work-wise? Um, I get a split in that energy. So to me, you know, if, if you don't have any opportunities, fine. But I keep picking up two. So don't be surprised if you don't have any at the moment that one's offered to you. And then shortly after, another thing pops up. And for some reason, potentially, maybe the other thing that pops up vibes with either maybe something you were interested in doing or that maybe you did a while ago but there's a similar vibe of what's bringing back into this moment even though it's been a little while you're reconnecting with it okay do you see more travel at all uh yeah more than likely yes okay and okay. also Good. you know it's not just local like in the united states i keep getting strong potential outside of the united states for some reason, there's a strong uh -huh. European connection. Okay. Any particular place? Uh, if I get it, I'll give it over. I'm not going to make crap up. I'm like, I don't know, but I keep getting that country in this case, in, in that <laughs> dynamic. But what's interesting is, is I do feel like there's a strong potential that as you're traveling around, that you will meet someone who has some pretty good power to them, so abundant or well-connected or whatever the case is, that will be able to offer you an opportunity. And this will be, you know, you traveled away into another country in this case, and the opportunity was waiting there for you just to travel to get that connection. And now, you know, and again, as I always say, just because anything's offered doesn't mean you have to even entertain it. But if anything, it will be a validation that you're going in the right direction. Here's an opportunity. But if you don't choose whatever that opportunity is and you do what you're going to do, it's because you choose to, not because you have to. Because this other, you know, has already been offered. What you got, Meg? Okay. Well, in terms for work, I do see that there's a little bit of a lag time, like things might not go as quickly as you want them to. Um, just so you know, there is there's this energy of of putting it all forward and making sure that you do what you need to do. That's in place already. 
I think the awareness of the jobs is in place, whether the, you have applications in or you've got your eyeballs on them, you know, but I feel like there might take a little bit of extra time here so that the right opportunities open up at the right times. So, and other than that, I got the European connection as well. Uh, before Jamie was talking, I, that came through clearly too. So I definitely confirm, I, I agree with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do pick up a very strong potential, not immediately, but a little ways down the road that you might find yourself in a very productive relationship and this other person will enjoy travel as well. Oh, okay. It's kind of nice. Yeah, when well, you know, you're just being you, but the very you that you are, it took the right person in the right way at the right time to make that connection. And again, if anything, it's at right. least validation, right? That another person in their own life experience is going in a direction like you are. And if anything, at least it's an yeah. offer to, you can do it together. And of course, and keep right. going. You know, if, if you would, I fake will. it till you make it. A few minutes a day, you already are the success that you're looking for. By being that end result, yeah. it pulls up from that quantum field of all potentials, that particular circumstance or experience. That's why, you know, for me, it's the embodiment as fake it till you make it as if it's already there. No, because on a quantum level, you will bring it to the surface of consciousness. Because for me, it's like, you know, you right. can meditate all you want, but what are these tools and techniques manifesting or why am I doing it? Very practical. Sure. So good. Right. And hi to your lovely Very son. Fun. What's that? Hi to your lovely son. Yes, I will say hello to him. He's always um, you know, interested in what you're doing and what you have to say. So I will definitely pass that along to him. Awesome. Good. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Definitely. You got it, Reese. Thanks for calling right. in. Take care. Uh, bye. bye. That's beautiful. I just and you know, it's so I nice. When I, can, I just want to tell you guys, it was a dropout, a big one. So you're on part two right now. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> like sorry, uh, part yeah, it was. I'm sitting here, I'm watching the whole thing, and all of a sudden it goes poof. <laughs> it was wow. like wow, because you didn't shift. At least it was consistent. So good. Oh, nice I, was, job. I caught it quick, but wow, it's going to be a part <laughs> one. Part two. Right, uh, stuff happens. You know, and, and I think as, as you were bringing up in the intro, it's kind of nice to sometimes get a different perspective, psychic, the tarot, astrology, other avenues, so that one, you realize, question everything, but two, that there might be more ways to see things than what you're perceiving it to be. Sometimes we just need other angles of perspective to go, oh, you know, I've heard that crap a thousand times, but click. That's the first time I kind of see it that way. All right, I'll try it. And mm -hmm. the good thing is, is people are opening up. I'm like, good, question everything and be open and let me know how it goes. And they usually come back going, I did it. I'm like, freaking A, congratulations. And what else do you want to do? Because if the approach ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep going. And they're like, wow. That, 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 works. Yeah. That, works. that works for some people. <laughs> well, you know, it's all we can do is I that, share that, it with people. That, she's going, yeah, 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 it does. Yeah. I mean, I'm serious. Some people, some people are just stubborn. I, I don't care what anybody wants to say. They're just stubborn. You say, try this. They don't. And you say, well, okay, look, if that doesn't work, you know, you really don't have any, anything else that you could possibly do. Well, see, I told you it won't work. Well, how would you know it doesn't work if you didn't do it? Duh. You know, it's yep. like, yeah, I've said to people many, many times over all the years that we've been on the radio, you know, people, y'all you know, talk about shows and things like that. Talk about you guys and not you, Mag. <laughs> you were, you were Jamie. Jamie was first. <laughs> but but the, the thing was, and I was talking to people and telling people like, hey, you know, I got this idea. You know, if you're going to do this, do this, blah, blah, blah. And it's funny. Back then, 10 years ago, I can, I can tell you from my heart from, from 10 years ago, people listened. Strange, but true, you know, like they were they were listening and there was none of this Vietnam stuff and everything else. Now people were living for one place, America, you know, and it was one of those kind of things that where they were relaxed in their mind, relaxed in their thoughts, you know, nothing bogging them down that with all this yeah. woke stuff and everything. I mean, come on, let's face it. You can go out and shoot your 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 uh, Budweiser can right now. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I'm serious. That wasn't around 10 years ago. Now, with everything that's going on, it's clouding up people's inner self. 
Well, I mean, there's so much information they don't know what to accept. Yeah, well, you can't you can't discern from the truth because there's too much of the other around. And there's a lot of stimulation. Like uh, yes. I think I think our brains are somewhat overloaded all the time, like with all the the sensory input that we have to like maintain and sift through. There, uh, I mean, how much of our brain is sifting through stuff that we have to look at on social media or the internet all the time? It's quite a bit. It's quite a bit. And then where does the focus go? Like all of a sudden, if your thoughts are going into this outside energy, where what's left with the inner energy? Where is it anymore? How do you even get back to it? How do you find it? You know, if you're so focused on picking up your phone and looking at something or watching TV or doing, you know, we don't go within as much as we used to unless you choose to, right? Unless you have like a meditation practice or, you know, you walk every morning just to make sure that you, you get your quiet time. So you have to, you really do have to carve that out in everyday reality right now because of the bombardment. And you're worth it to take the time for yourself. Yeah. You know, these distractions become very consistent and then we get on a cyclical way of living. You get up, you work, you do this, you come home, you Take time, you go seepy seeps, and then you get a, so, you know, again, it's a repetitive pattern. We go around the sun, every time we go around, it's a year. And so, again, you know, it's just a lot of the experiences, but it becomes cyclical. Day, morning, all this kind of stuff, and then we perpetuate the pattern and not even realize it. Yeah, creating patterns, and that's where we get caught. Yeah. We get caught in patterns, and then life gets difficult, or we get uncomfortable, or... We're not happy anymore with the way our life's going. And then, oh, now, we, now we're ready to change. Now we're ready to, to shift it up. But I think that's why life can be so challenging for a lot of people is because we do not break patterns easily. Now, in astrology, of course, some signs are, are more adaptable than others. So there's something to be said for that, too. But that's not always the case. You know, we are all creatures of habit because our subconscious is on autopilot all the time, 95% of the time. So we have a habitual brain or computer brain that just goes, goes, goes. And until we interfere with the interface of the subconscious, then we will be creatures of habit. And I don't know if we can avoid that right now. I don't know if we're consciously evolved enough to avoid a lot of that. I mean, there is subconscious reprogramming, imprinting, you know, removing conditioning, growing, expanding, and evolving and having spiritual awakening experiences and all the fun juju that happens and that's what it takes to shift the energy it's either unhappiness or enlightenment <laughs> it's, it's kind of like the poles right uh, and then that thing that was on i don't know whether you guys saw it but if you did it was about the uh the, i talked about this in the last show uh the, the taking the energy in your brain and what you are, who you are, all your memories and all that kind of stuff. And then feeding it into a computer that puts the whole thing together and it puts it in an AI. Oops. Now, I know, James. I know. I know. I, I can see it in your eyes. You know, you know. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm saying to myself, I'm, wait a minute. You know, I, and I've said this before. The soul is a battery. It's like it's like that that little pink uh, rabbit that runs around with the with the drum. You know what I mean? It's like uh, the batteries are there. If the batteries are not there, the the not, the, the rabbit's not moving. Okay. So, in other words, when the soul has left the body, the body doesn't move. You get it? Dead. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Those things Very cease good. to exist. Okay. Chemical dump, <laughs> in a sense, with the, with the body. But the thing was, as far as uh, the idea of what we're we're perceiving. And our souls are literally taking in. That's one of the things that's, that's like a blockage that so many people have. They can't beat themselves out of a paper bag. They really, really can't. They don't know what's going on. The, um, the nuclear family, bing, gone. You know what I mean? It's like, it's out of here. All these things that made us what we are in God's image, if you want to put go that far, the thing is, we are supposed to be what we were 20 years ago. Now, but we're not. Now, yes, we do change. Everybody changes. We all grow up. You know, let's just put it that way. Or some, you know, 
Some don't. (laughs) But the idea of the thing is that as we grow up, we get this, how would you say it? Um, I don't know. We're like, we're like an old history book. You know what I mean? Like if you ask me a question about something that happened in 1972, I could tell you what 1972 was all about. Cause I sat on the gas lines. <laughs> I mean, you know, all this kind of stuff. I mean, people talk about the high cost of gas. How about when you had none? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, but, but people don't, you know, it's like not there. And when you do start talking about it, things like this, they're like somewhere in the future, somewhere. They don't even know where they are. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, so much of the stuff that that we have going around, like what you guys do, people must listen to. And I mean, really, really listen to. Ponder it. Do whatever you want to do with it. Let it go through your head and that a few times. Ask questions. That's the best thing to do. I always say questions are like the the number one thing. Because the answers, even if the answer isn't quite right, you will make it right by being able to get the answer and answer. Let's put it that way. And yeah, some something. Yep. Exactly. So, so really seriously, you with the cards, Maggie, are are like unbelievable to me. Anyway, you know, I mean, you you have just to be able to to uh, draw something from the from the cards is something that everyone should beat down your door for. You know, and we've we've been on everything. We've been on Facebook. We've been on Twitter. We've been on the she's the I there's a million things that I throw everything on. And Maggie had it on too because I got hers before, which she had sent back to me. <laughs> and I don't see the people on here. So what are they doing? They're watching CNN. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> send me that thing. I swear to God, a guy. Uh, all right, I'll tell you about the four people I know from Alaska. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. They were all the way up the top of Alaska, right? They wrote me. Sorry we missed the, sl- the show. Send us a copy of the show. That was the last show. So I sent them a copy of the show. I said, this is for all four of you. I mean, come on. It's minus 70. <laughs> you know what wow, I mean? What crazy. the hell are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. Minus but they listen to our show up there. <laughs> But if they could, if they could, they would call in. But when it gets that cold and everything else, I mean, communications are, you know, it's by radio. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, but when they do call in, you're going to hear somebody going. (laughs) But the good thing is, is you have shows that can help other people. It's not just about entertaining, which is always good, but it's about entertaining and informing, sharing, not pushing, but sharing those insights. And sometimes people just need to see it a little bit differently to go, okay, I was seeing it a whole different way. But the way you just shared that, I kind of have a slightly different perspective. And when they can realize the empowerment of their choice to go, they're not made to do stuff, they're allowed to do it, that can sometimes lighten the load to go, okay, I've got to produce everything and what I'm doing, but you know what? I'm going to take a few minutes and give myself permission to do the best that I can with where I'm at and what I'm aware of. Because, you know, we're always growth-seeking beings. We always want to do better. But no matter how many dreams, how many aspirations in life you have, once you attain them, you have more. Half the fun's the journey getting there. Most of us are like, when it over. You're like, well, okay, if that works for you. Mm. No longer just surviving and existing, living. What's yeah, the meaning of life to live? There it is. There it is. But Maggie, you believe that more than anybody. It's the living part. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, I'm serious. I mean, even when, when you were on the last show, I think you said it once in the last show. And that living is half of the battle. If you can't live to the few fullest, then try harder. <laughs> or change change what it means to you. You know, some people say, well, I'll feel like I'm living to my fullest if I have something, right? If I have the right relationship or the right whatever, and so they they are limiting themselves by thinking that they need a certain equation to be happy or a certain equation to live. And that's where I think we get stuck in humanity is we're waiting for something outside of ourselves to to be in place or to validate something so that we can we can feel those vibrations of living and freedom and fun and happiness. 
And I honestly think that life is the approach we take in life. It, it has so much impact. If you move through your day saying, hello world, let's find some happiness today. And that's what you're focused on is seeing the good and seeing the happy and, and like really tuning that in, then that's going to be a part of your reality. If you wake up saying, when is this storm going to be, you know, done, then, then what do you get more of? You get more of the storm. And so I really feel like we do not in our society, we do not take a hundred percent responsibility for how we feel sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we go awry. If we knew that we felt unhappy and we said, okay, I have to be responsible for this. Then I always think that people will absolutely be listening to these shows, be calling in for a reading, be doing the things that they could do to get themselves to that point of happiness because they just have to recognize that they have the power within to do so. And they just have to be pointed back to themselves. But if you don't want to be responsible for your own situation of being unhappy, then you're not going to be a seeker. The only people that seek are the ones that have something worth seeking which they have a connection already to their I am, their self, their spirituality, whatever you want to call it, God, but they're seeking, they're questing. They're like, how do I get closer to this connection? How do I feel this more? And if you are not a seeker, you're going to get just kind of swept into, oh, you're not a that's seeker, just, you're a sucker. Ah! No, <laughs> but you just get swept into, that's just normal everyday reality. You know, life's just hard or life's just like this, you know, instead of saying, but it could be different. It could be different. And so I think that we feel like it could be different, but if we really are responsible for that feeling that it could be different, well, what are you going to do about it? Why are you not happy to begin with? What's the work? And people think that enlightenment means that you don't work on things and that everything is perfect. But really what it means is it gives you more to work on, more to refine, more to get through, right, you more know, to understand absolutely and more to understand. So a lot of this, I think it's the big, I call it the big R word. It's called responsibility. I think we fight it in our culture. We, we fight it in our society. Everything is offered to us. Oh, you want entertainment? Click a button. Oh, you want food? Click a button. Oh, what do you need? Click a button. And it'll be there. You know, we are button clickers now. What oh, we, yeah. I know. And and we're not out there digging a garden and hunting for our food and doing what we need to. We don't have to do that. We're lazy. And so what, what responsibility really do we have in life? If it's not for our own survival, what is this all about? And when we take out our own survival from the equation, then we feel like, we don't have a, a, a purpose. What is the purpose of this? If I don't have to hunt and gather for my food, if I don't have to work to put a roof over my head, if everything is just a click of a button, what, what's the point? What's the point of being a button clicker for the rest of my life? And I think that we're, we're just, we're just having to process that. And the other side of that is, okay, well, what do you want to be responsible for? Because it gives, you know, the comfort of America, at least right now gives us ease to say, okay, well, if I don't have to hunt and gather for my food, then what actually do am I responsible for? And then that question leads to what your soul purpose is. Why are you here? How are you here to serve humanity? What is your mission? And if you don't know, or you're not asking those questions, you get stuck in that in-between limbo state of, all right, let me just make this existence as good as I possibly can make it based on whatever button I have to click you know, and then, then you go forward. And until, until you say, no, I want to be responsible for harvesting walnuts and planting a walnut tree and getting some, some different type of nutrition into my life. And I just use nutrition as a spiritual sense of nourishment. We're not talking about a walnut tree. We are talking about what kind of information do you gain from sources, from, from a true and trusted ancient source that has all, fruit already established, already ready to offer you. I don't know the, uh, the rantings of Maggie, right? But I think it's really about where are we responsible? Where do we assume responsibility? And do we even have responsibility? And that is the main question, I think, that keeps us either growing or stuck. I you know, think, you know, she's got, she's so right. Because what she's talking about is people that are lazy. 
they they made not only themselves, you know, either sitting down on a thing on a chair, or, you know, they they still do things. I mean, we got people that uh, with what's is where where we live. There's a you know people go around on bicycles and they have go uh, golf carts and they we have a, a whole we've got within I don't know half a mile one way and across the street the other way from where we live there's big golf carts now golf courts you know what I mean it's like uh, go play golf you know all over the place and then the other way it's golf and I mean this is Florida I mean you know that's what they do but. You know, like hitting that little ball, ball, you know, ball around. I mean, I'm serious. That is that is exercise. I mean, I will not take that away from anybody. It is exercise. However, what if I happen to walking like two miles? Yeah. You, you know, have a conversation, I, talking yeah. with each other. Freaking. Yeah. Interacting. Don't don't say, yes. where's that ball? You know, it's like, hey, like, who cares? You know, like, hit the thing in that, you know, you under, over par, you know, whatever. Because, I mean, I have heard all the stories in that from over there. And it's funny. They're lazy. They really, really are. They got a lot of money, and they're, they're, they're lazy. That's exactly you know, what they are. It's interesting, but on average, we tend to look outside of ourselves, as you were sharing, for the experience of validation. And I always say, as a human, we tend to live in a reactive state of experience rather than a proactive what I mean by that is, is here's what a lot of us will do. If I have this job, then I feel successful. And if I have this amount of money, then I feel wealthy. And we'll wait for the outside physical manifestation of the job of the money to happen to feel successful and wealthy. When if you'll start vibing that way before it's anywhere in sight, you're now setting vibrational patterns of co-creation, not manipulation, that will bring you more of what you're vibing with. No karma, natural laws, cause and effect. As a vibrational match, you get more positive energy, you'll attract more positive experiences in life. You get frustrated, and it doesn't mean everything's perfect, but I found just for myself, depending on how I was feeling, life is reflecting it. And if you start to get frustrated, because for me, I'm like, well, frick that. I'm not going to live in a reactive state. I got to wait, and then sometimes there'll be years before I can be happy. I'm like, frick, no. I'll be happy and abundant and let that come to me as a vibrational match. Mm -hmm. Then people start to go, God, you're so lucky. What a coincidence. I'm like, yeah, luck. Sure. Uh, <laughs> they only see the end result of manifestation. They don't necessarily see the intricacies of the universe working in tandem with us. Or, and saying, or saying thank you before you get to where you're going. If the prayer you only pray is thank you, that's enough. Because vibration will match back. You get more things to be thankful for. Yeah. See, now, yeah. And who do you think I learned that from? <laughs> and yeah. I'm perfectly fine with people being lazy. Okay. Cause I'm a workaholic and I know that that's not hundred percent healthy either, you know, so they're there. I'm perfectly fine with someone being lazy as long as they feel like they have purpose that they're serving and that they're happy. Then yes, play golf every day, go have fun, enjoy this existence here. And just remember, we're all we are all interconnected. So the more people that can be relaxed and be in that place of joy, I'm all for, you know, it, and I just feel like, OK, but are you happy? Just be happy. You know, make sure that you are cultivating your own happiness because happiness will lead you down a path to enlightenment. I think they go hand in hand. I think when we become aware of ourselves and we feel good about ourselves because of that self-awareness, that's what enlightens us into the light body that we are and the light that we carry on this planet. And so I feel like that's a huge thing. If you can be lazy and do that, do that too. Just be happy about it. You know, because I live with Jamie, he's lazy. You know, he still works. He works hard. He does his, you know, he does. But compared to me, it's not the same, you know, like. Yeah, but you're physical. Yeah, I, I playfully say I'm lazy, but I'm efficient. That's the point. You can be playing. I don't have to go. I know. I don't know nothing, man. But if we can put this, it's not always about working hard. It's about working effectively and smarter, because even though Jamie appears to be lazy, the work that he's doing is on an energetic level and he's still doing work. He's still contributing and fulfilling his purpose when he's meditating and when he's improving his skills and when he's doing other things. And so, you know, even, and I don't know, I think I just want everyone to be happy and I want everyone to find who they are. And I think if those two things go hand in hand and I think 
I think, you know, we we look at the current suicide rates that are up. We look at current, you know, all these things, all the, well, we, we don't need to get on about, you know, normal news because it's not my forte. But when we look at this, like, why are so many people checking out right now? Because they, they're done with what this reality has to offer their soul, you know? And so how how is life worth staying here, worth living for? And that ultimately, I think that is where mentally and emotionally and spiritually, we all come together to that same place of like, okay, what the heck am I doing here? You know, what is this all about? If I'm happy, cool. If I'm not happy, it could not be cool for a lot of people, you know? And so th those are the questions I'm always asking, like how how do we get people to be responsible for how they feel so that they, they seek, they dig, they quest? And to be open to take that responsibility of yeah. self-realization. It's not always easy. Most of us feel like life is happening to us rather than realizing it's happening because of us. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a funky, funky life. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I, you know, I'm serious. I mean, you know, really. When you, well, I'm older than you are. So, I mean, let, let's put it this way, Annette. You know, if you think back, all the way back, you know what I mean? You know, like, I'm going to give you a history lesson here. Long, long years time. And I'm sixty. I'm like, yeah, long, and... yeah, but a long time ago, like she says, you're lazy, and she's a workaholic. Yeah. Twenty years ago, twenty five, thirty, forty, fifty, fifty. I would, I would say probably a better number. Fifty, fifty five years. Everybody was a melt of both of you. Right. When they were, when they were down, they were down. When they were up, they were very up. Mm -hmm. Through the years, we've evolved into either we're this or that you ever notice and it comes in all kinds of all kinds of flavors and colors like flags there are so many things that we've lost in so many years this is this is patience all, is one of them things have gotten so busy like three seconds are gonna what the exactly you know evolution evolution is not with us <laughs> well we have more we have more labels than we used to have yeah, there you go. You know, we do. We have more labels and we have more things that like to be labeled, you know, whether it's an ailment or your sexual preference or, you know, we, we just have way more labels, way more ways to identify and declare to the universe that this is who you are or to the world. Yeah, and, you know. I think the less labels we have on ourselves, the better, because it can, we allow ourselves to explore different aspects of who we are. There's more freedom. Yet, I remember growing up, I was like, I really felt I had to label myself because it was an important part of me trying to understand relationships that I was witnessing in my life. And I was like, okay, so for instance, you know, my moms got together and when I found out they were a couple, it was a very taboo. We're in the early 80s, and here's two women coming out of – they were still in the closet by then, but I knew about it at that point. And I was just like, wow, I need to label myself now because they weren't, quote, unquote, following a normal road. And my – as 11 years old, and I think this is where we start to go awry here. We don't even have deductive capabilities in our little brains yet. But 11 years old, I said, oh, it's important now to label myself. And so now this has become a thing of what labels are you going to take on? You know, what am I going to be when I grow up? That's a label. Um, do I have autism or ADD or ADHD? have another label. Here's another label. What's your sexual preference? Do you know it now? So you know which bathroom you need to go into. Here's another label. Oh, but yeah. I don't, I don't think that we should be labeling ourselves and, and perpetuating that paradigm in our culture. Because when we label ourselves, we are pigeonholing and we don't allow this exploration that we could be something else. And I labeled myself at a young age because I thought it was important that I knew my sexual preference at the age of 11 because it was a, a hot topic in my family at the moment, you know, and I didn't need to do that. You know, I absolutely didn't need to do that, but I did it. And I went against the label long <laughs> after that because I was like, oh, I don't need the label. But until you decide or that you don't need a label, this world asks us so often 
to pigeonhole. Oh, are you male? Are you female? Are you ju- are you they? Are you whatever? What's your label? What's your and, name? and that's just a common a common thing in, in nowadays. So before that, it was like, what do you have to be when you grow up? And you had to pigeonhole that, and you had to stick with the label, and you had to have a career track, and you had to do other things. So in in different parts of of mm, time and history we had different labeling things now we have a lot of labels and everything has to have a label and then all of a sudden we're like how do I be my authentic self if I've decided I was all these labels what if I'm all of them or none of them what if I'm one one day and then I change my mind the next day you know can I be fluid with myself can I be versatile or am I going to be that stubborn fixed person stuck in a label. And so I think that's where we've gone awry in our cultures too, is there's so much check this box, declare who you are, and then that's it. We're going to just, that's what we expect of you. That's what you're going to be. And that's how we're going to treat you. And I don't know. It's just, I think if we could get out of saying, if, what if I could just say, Hey, I'm Maggie, I don't need a label. I'm not male or female. I'm not right or wrong or up or down. I'm just going to be Maggie today. And I'm going to just feel into who Maggie is today. Is Maggie the workaholic today? Or is Maggie taking the day off and going to be lazy? Or is she going to like get creative and do something else? Like if we asked ourselves every single moment, what feels like who I am in this moment? What feels that way? We would have a lot more. We'd be more productive for one. And then we'd be more versatile. We'd be more fluid. And as expansion of consciousness in humanity is happening right now, the more fluid we can be in the self-discoveries process, the better. You know, I I stayed away from labels for a very long time in my practice. I would I didn't even label myself as a psychic until I started the Psychic Evolution podcast with Jamie Clark. That's the first time I ever labeled myself as a psychic, just because that I didn't want the label. I just wanted to be me you know? And so, but the world asks for the labels. And so, and then we get caught. I have to identify who I am. I remember having four websites trying to figure out how to appease everyone who wanted different parts of my label. And I had to eventually, I don't know how many times I've had different websites. I keep revamping, remodeling, doing this because I I throw away the old model. I throw away the old labels. It's like, it's not my jam anymore. So I finally just stuck with my name. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't oh, well, have to... one one site that's it you know? right yeah. I don't have to change it anymore but it took me a while to get there thinking oh, I've got to make sure that I'm okay for this person because they're not going to be okay with Tarot because they're here to see me for healing and they're not going to be okay with the healing because you know it goes against their religion or what you know it's like if, if we start thinking about what the world wants from us through these labels we will get swept up into the labeling you know, you talk about you talk about labels and things, and that I had uh, the last last week, and that I had uh, Dr. Turi was was on the show, and I don't know whether you listened to the show or not, but the man is wonderful. He really is. He's like uh, Nostradamus come back. Cool. Oh, you know, one of these kind of things. He's French, you know, comes from France, and he's been a friend of mine for as long as you have. Nice. <laughs> so, I mean, we we know each other a long time. And we were talking on the, on the show, and you want to talk about labels and things. He was also talking about them and different things that, that we do and go, that like the planet is going through, the stars are going through. I get finished talk, talking to you about what, Pluto or whatever it was? Yeah, okay. He picks up the rest of the conversation right after you. Nice. And, you know, went on, you know, the, the astron- astronomic part of it. Mm-hmm. And it was, it, was, it was amazing. And all of these people that saw that show and this show and well, not this show yet, but the, the show and that before everybody says the same thing. And they said, you know, we got so many things from that show. And I keep telling them, there's so many things that go on in the show that goes on in your life every day. Like you're talking about labels. I'm talking about sensible feeling things, you know, like, mm-hmm. like, where, like as simple as it's hot out or the sun's up or it's going to rain. You know what I mean? Like, like that, that's your basics. And then you have your other things. Oh, well, I didn't tie my shoes. Um, I need air in my tire. I forgot to get gas. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got all these different things that actually make you the emotional person you wind up being. And at the top, to top it all off, now we've we got to put the cream on top of the cake. 
listen to uh, what's this TV or radio radio, you know, while all these things are going on at the same time. That's it. You know, you just blew the whole thing up, period. Yep. You don't know which one to follow. So you go. So, uh... I've told people do and I do it myself. Go somewhere, close your eyes, sit in a chair, sit on the couch, sit on the floor, you know, go outside, sit on the grass. That's the best one. But, you know, go outside and sit somewhere or whatever and don't think. Don't think. Everything, things will come to you. You won't have to retrieve them. Do they respond to you when you say that? Two did. Two did. One said she felt amazing when she was done. The guy, he turned around and he says, I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so I was like, oh, do. <laughs> it's the subtlety. That's why I was like, what was the response? Ah, good. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. The, the female the, got it, the male. Mm. Well, and, you know, that's I think that that's a very interesting dynamic. And it seems to be that the females are more open, more receptive to this spiritual stuff. Because I'd have to say probably about 85 to 90 percent of my clients are female. And more and more guys are coming, but it's very interesting because the good thing is, is we're just the validation of potential experiences. Hey, if you go in this direction, here's most likely what you're going to get. If you go in this direction, here's what you're going to get. So then we become the quantum road sign and that quantum field. All experiences are happening now. All potential outcomes are happening now. What brings it into your reality, your focused thought and your attention to those thoughts creates a vibrational match. That if you're thinking challenging, you'll create challenging circumstances. You go abundant, happy, whatever the case is, you'll attract more things to be happy and abundant. But won't the women try things faster than men? Men, yeah, they're more questions. open. Yep. Men are questioned. What does it have in for me? You know, what does it? What the? What will I feel like when it's done? Uh, will this make me a better person? Yeah, you know, there's a million different questions. That, I mean, I've I've heard on that end. The women, on the other hand, the women say, oh, yeah, OK, <laughs> like, if it feels right. Yeah. And that's that's the thing, you know, women naturally just naturally energetically have more feminine energy than men and men have more masculine energy than women. Just naturally the way you're born, you know, and so we naturally can like trust our intuition with a lot more ease and grace sometimes because we've allowed ourselves to feel culturally men have not allowed themselves to feel as much as women as a norm okay as a norm and of course now we're breaking all the labels because we're not supposed to use men and women anymore in conversation so uh, uh, people who are born with feminine parts have more feminine energy you know but what i will say about this is that this is also a cultural dynamic that is shifting because right now we're looking at the value of the feminine, the value of the feelings, the val value of receiving. And that's all the spiritual work that any of us do. You know, Jamie is amazing at feeling, but it was cultivated from a young age by his mom saying, feel it, feel it, feel it. And if he wasn't pointed into the direction of his feelings, he might not have been as amazing as he was in his career, you know, or he might have had to wake up in a different way. And so culturally, when we throw away the labels of like, oh, women, oh, if you're a girl, if you cry, right? How many, how many people have heard that on a school playground, Don't be a sissy. right? Don't, yeah, exactly. Well, there's other word choice words now that we can't say on the air, but um, you can, yeah, you can on this. <laughs> We're not, I just won't, I guess. Um, <laughs> You can, but, you can write them down. You can send them to me. <laughs> right. Hold up a side. But, I, you know, I think, you know, when the feminine, and the masculine, they have been out of balance for thousands and thousands of years. And that is part of what the consciousness of humanity is pulling back into a, ba a balance point is the balance between the masculine and the feminine. And right now there is a surge to trust the feelings, to go into how do you feel? Be responsible for your feelings. Yeah. Dig into your feelings. Trust your feelings. Expand the connection to your feelings. That is all feminine energy. And when we can do that, we're going to wake up and be like, whoa, I was out of balance. I was I, you know, my workaholic, it's because I'm more masculine driven. Who the man? Even though I'm a female, I'm more masculine driven sometimes by the nature. I was programmed this way 
culturally, our whole society is programmed to do, 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 go, go, go. And they don't take the time to feel, to sit, to breathe, to meditate, to love, to focus on harmony. This is not the things that that we're taught to do. So we have to reteach ourselves to dig into that feminine and allow ourselves to receive. And honestly, when I started this work, I was a basket case because it took me over two hours trying to even tell someone how I felt because I was so disconnected from even knowing what I felt, from even feeling into what I felt, and then trying to have the words to say what I felt. That's the learning process that I want everyone to do. I mean, I did it. It was brutal the first few years I was trying to like connect to my feelings. I had them so far shoved down and emotionally repressed and backwards and sideways. It was horrible. But I had a great patient teacher who would ignore me for two hours until I could talk and say (laughs) what I needed to say, you know, based on what I was feeling. And I would be like, I think he's like, I'm not asking what you think. What do you feel? What do you feel? And so question. Yeah. Yeah. And so take that home with you today, listeners. What is it that you feel? Learn how to touch into the feelings. Learn how to come up with the words to even describe it. And it's the hardest thing to do when you don't have the words. It's the hardest thing to allow yourself to feel if it's going to be uncomfortable. But I guarantee there's going to be a lot of things that are uncomfortable that we shove down. And that's okay. They're meant to be felt and let go of. You know, they're meant to be feminine in and out like water fluid. And so I, you know, this is, again, if we would just say, I'm ready to be responsible for what I'm feeling, we would be on the course of discovering our feminine energy, being in sync with it, and then helping to create more of this balance. That's what's going to evolve the consciousness of humanity right now. You know, uh, just a little bit for my awareness, the emotions, a, a lot of people, as she's saying, the feelings, they tend to think that the feelings are emotions. And I'm like, to me, there's a difference between feelings and emotions. To me, emotions are happy and sad. Feelings to me are an acknowledgement of an experience. Like I feel happy or I feel angry. They don't go, I happy, happy. It's a feeling of acknowledgement that they feel a particular way, happy, frustrated, clear, fun, whatever the case is. So it becomes just a little bit of insight might give us a different perspective for some same old information, but possibly seeing it a little bit differently. Like, you know, I've heard that crap a thousand times, but click, that's the first time I kind of see it that way. Okay. I'm like, good, question everything and keep going. And, and you know, as much as everything that you're saying and everything that Maggie said, has to get out there it has to get out there there's no two other ways i mean if there's any kind of a way in it that i can find a, a mountain big enough to get up on top of and say listen god damn it <laughs> <laughs> but i, I uh, swear to god i'm crazy i'd do it but the idea the idea of the thing is people have to realize that it's not their their fault you ever get that you get that feeling in a person that they think it's their fault no, it's not your fault. It's everything that's around you that helps, but it's not your fault. You just let it happen. So how do you do that? Well, it's good. Take two steps back and say, I am. Period. End of story. Stop everything. You know, get off the truck. You know, it's one of those things. That's it. Finished. You know, and from that from that step on. If you keep that frame of mind, in a sense, and feel it at your heart, first of all, I mean, let's face it, everybody talks, but don't realize how they're talking. You can, I mean, I could go up to anybody and say anything, but I mean it. <laughs> heart. Would you say? I'm not going up triggered. to somebody saying, Oh, wow, you're the sexiest guy I ever saw in my life. <laughs> <laughs> James, we would but, take that as a compliment. But, but, in my, but in my heart, I wouldn't be honestly saying what I said. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just not. It's not <laughs> That's funny. But I mean, I'm serious. I mean, you know, people don't realize that you can be so honest to yourself faster, easier, more plenity 
of it. You know, what do they, what do they call it? Or just plenty of happiness to the to the end of the whole thing, all by yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you should stay by yourself because other people are helps or help people to you. Stick around people. People will gravitate to you if you are that type of person. If you're the kind of person that honestly says what's on your mind and ask a lot of questions. But they know it's genuine. If you're saying it, you mean it. It's not just like, oh, just what I want to hear to make me happy. It's okay. And you know what? And a lot of times they'll say thank you for your straightforwardness, for your sincerity. I'm like, uh, well, of course, because that kind of connection is, you know, they're coming to us for a reason. That's why I will not make stuff up. If I get it, here it is. If not, I don't have a clue mm -hmm. about the empowerment of self-realization, not negation. I got people that I see, some of the, some people that are even customers, and that, that I, I will just like maybe once a year, you know, say hi to this person or go into his place or something. And yesterday, I went into somebody's place, and the woman that was there that I knew that I haven't seen in like eight months or it's something. Like they home, right? She turns, she turns around, she goes, Bob's here. <laughs> See, I didn't say who I was, what I was. I just walked through the door. Right. That was it. <laughs> so Without it, knocking. It's, it's, what, it's what people remember you from by. You know what I mean? Do they remember? The ones who remember your name and that are the ones you impressed the most by saying nothing. Just being yourself. That's all you have to be. That's how you stand out and the passion. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? People think, oh, well, you know, I need this, this, uh, uh, you know, M51 tank to drive down the street. Everybody will know me when I do that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, sure. Everybody will know you. So all the, all the guys in the jail. But that becomes the familiarity. They'll attach something to get recognized. Bingo. If I have that, then I get it. Yep. Bingo. Yeah. And I mean, let's face it. You, you, I mean, seriously, every single one of us with nothing in our hands, nothing on our bodies or anything else but clothes. I left that. She was thinking about that. But, uh, you, know, the, you know, just to be yourself, true to yourself, yes. truthful to yourself. And don't forget, there is a God. And that God is looking at us all the time. And I mean, I'm serious. Half of the time, I, you know, I was so close to him, it wasn't funny. And I know what it feels like to be close to him. Right. It's and to weird. realize you are him. Hmm. It's, it's, the most, it's the most free feeling you'll ever feel feel anywhere on it's not here it's not on this earth yep that feeling it's just not but if you can put yourself or just listen to what i'm saying and try to to say to yourself i'd love to be in that position but not dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you feel like right you must be dead yeah there, that's there's, exactly. there's something to be said for bringing heaven to earth right yeah i mean i'm serious you can do it it's possible and but all it does. Had it been there and then back here to know what that what that is. But it flows through you, the essence of your being. That's when it's like, you know, what made you choose this? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just that's who I am. It's not what I do. It's who I am. I don't know how to be anything different. And a lot of that aspect will guide us in our own life direction, many different ways, many different connections with people and circumstances and directions. But truly, we are the captain of our own ship. We're the one who is driving it or floating it one way or another through our conscious thoughts. And it's that type of connection when we can learn to adjust the thoughts, we'll begin to see the reality change as we perceive it. Okay, it's so usually just a reaction. Gonna, when are we not going to talk to each other? What? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not kidding you. I He's mean, so sexy. You know you the, the, can't resist him. <laughs> The oh, day will be no. there when it is, it is no. mental telepathy. Yeah, a lot of our brothers so. and sisters, yeah, they don't need to have the verbal communication. It's mental. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, you know when, you, when, you, when you when you work in, in uh, New York City for twenty five years, I guess you pick up something somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like walking into a door house without knocking. <laughs> Bob's here. Oh, that, that, that one. I only I only know the other one where it's like uh, you know where, where somebody that comes in and says, "Oh, listen, does anybody here want to play?" <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, you know, British, British Village was, was great a long time ago, but now it's the whole world, so hey. <laughs> the expansion, I'm, right, I'm, where are we taking it? The, and that's the job is let others expand from within. So many of us see it on the outside, and it's like, really? It's all within, everything. Yeah. We are the universe. The universe is us. Mm, okay, now where can they get you guys? Easy peasy. You can find Jamie at jamieclark.net. You can find Maggie at maggieclark.net. And of course, if you want more of the Psychic Evolution podcast, you can go to psychicevolution.net. And we're on all the, the platforms that offer the podcast. So it's really cool. And again, you know, it's the ability to get connected to people. Because I always say you can have all that talent in the world, but if nobody knows you're there, whatever, it's being able to get that connection. And first and, connecting with yourself so that you find yourself within life, not lose yourself to it. And everyone can get a copy of the show just by writing to Bob Charles Show at live.com or go on Rumble or YouTube and just put in Pyramid One Radio. And right over to the channel and you'll get right over there and you can get, I mean, today, and it's on Facebook now, I think, still. I told everybody, I gave everybody the address on YouTube. You can get years a video yeah, yep. on there. And I mean, I'm serious that some of them, I mean, I've gone back and listened to some of them and said, mm, that wasn't bad. I, what did I know? You know, it's like you, you listen to it later and it's like, yeah, that's, that's it's simple. a different frame of mind. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Must be, must be. And that was always great stuff. But Bobby, always good, brother. <laughs> You know, ladies and gentlemen, these are these. I've, I've written it a million times. This is America's magical duo couple. Unbelievable. They've got things going that you have no idea. Go to jamieclark.net or maggieclark.net. Get on there. Look at what they do. Look at what they are. You want to be like them. Meanwhile, Bless you, y'all. Bob Charles. Out!